Historically, the Republican Party has offered significant progress to the political history of the United States. Republican President Ronald Reagan gave us Reaganomics, a reduced taxes, government intervention, and regulation plan that helped bring America out of one of the worst depressions since the 30s. Jeanette Rankin, the first woman to ever be elected to the U.S. House of Representatives, ran and won as a Republican in 1916. John McCain, a former prisoner of war, Vietnam War veteran, and very respected leader, represented the Republican Party and his state as a six-term senator from Arizona. Ultimately, it would be unfair to say that the Republican Party has always been a detriment to the United States' global reputation. With that said, what happened to it? There are debates about when the Republican Party finally started its descent into a chaotic power struggle. Some would argue that the party lost its identity when George Bush was facing record low approval rates due to the war in Afghanistan and Iraq. I say the fun kicked off on June 16, 2015. In a speech at Trump Tower, Donald Trump announces that he is running for President of the United States. In what proved to be the beginning of a seemingly endless string of personal and professional controversies, Trump infamously included a shot at Mexican immigration in his speech, saying, When Mexico sends its people, they're sending people who have lots of problems. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists. And some, I assume, are good people. These inflammatory comments were only the beginning of Trump's crusade against groups of people he felt were a detriment to the United States. On December 7, 2015, the Trump campaign put out a press release calling for the complete shutdown of Muslims entering our country until our country's representatives can figure out what is going on. Trump, already known for his arrogant and outlandish behavior, makes headlines yet again on the 7th of October in 2016. Previously unaired audio services of Trump discussing pursuing sex with married women, being able to force himself upon women without repercussions due to his celebrity status, and most famously saying in regard to pursuit of these women that he grabs them by the pussy. Despite a clear prejudice against Mexican Americans, Muslims, and now a blatant disregard for consent in pursuing sexual acts with women, having never held political office or obtaining political experience of any kind, and having gone on record describing Republican voters as mindless, Donald Trump wins the presidency as a Republican in November of 2016. Once elected president, many were hopeful that Trump's demeanor would take a more professional turn, motivated by holding our nation's highest office. Those people would be disappointed, as Trump only seemed to be more motivated to temper tantrums and political blunders from his untouchable position in the Oval Office. Trump seems more interested in critiquing rivals than making any notable progress in our nation. Arguably one of Trump's biggest political scandals finds a home in headlines in May, five months into Trump's presidency. FBI Director James Comey announces an ongoing investigation into a potential illegal collusion effort between Russia and the Trump campaign during the 2016 presidential race. Donald Trump fires James Comey less than a week later for alleged unrelated reasons. The obvious relation between James Comey's investigation into Trump and Trump's firing of Comey causes a political stir about Trump's dissolving of the independency of the United States Justice Department. Although Trump appears to be illegally protecting himself from legal retribution, he finds support in prominent Republican leaders such as Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and House Speaker Paul Ryan. In my opinion, this is the beginning of the Republican Party's leadership exposing its true goal, to maintain power over their Democratic colleagues even if the cost is their own integrity and a damaged U.S. reputation abroad. How does the so-called leader of the free world and his allies expect respect from nations who are truly free if even an inquiry into alleged campaign law violations is intentionally hindered from the get-go? If the Trump campaign did in fact have no collusion with the Russian government in the 2016 presidential race, Trump would have waited to remove James Comey. If Trump was innocent, it seems logical to let the collusion probe conclude out of respect for our nation's democracy and then to remove James Comey in favor of another candidate Trump felt could do the job better. As if an admission of guilt, this is not what happened. Take this quote from Senate Intelligence Chairman Richard Burr of North Carolina. In a statement, Burr says, I am troubled by the timing and reasoning of Director Comey's termination. I have found Director Comey to be a public servant of the highest order, and his dismissal further confuses an already difficult investigation by the committee. His dismissal, I believe, is a loss for the Bureau and the nation. Burr is one of the many Republicans to speak out against Trump's extremely unseemly firing of Director James Comey. In a rare collective critique of someone in their own party, Republicans Ben Sass of Nebraska, Jeff Flake of Arizona, Rand Paul of Kentucky, Rob Portman of Ohio, Lamar Alexander of Tennessee, John Thune of South Dakota, Justin Amash of Michigan, and Carlos Cubero of Florida all expressed concern with the timing of Comey's termination.
So why, if it is abundantly clear to both Democrats and Republicans that Trump's firing of the FBI director is solely for the derailment of the investigation into Trump, does he still have the support of his Republican colleagues? Rand Paul, one of the previously mentioned senators who expressed concern with Trump's judgment, recently went on the show CBS This Morning and vehemently backed Trump's criticism of the Russia collusion investigation. It is this kind of wishy-washy politics that is what is wrong with the Republican Party. Rand Paul questions the judgment of our commander-in-chief one day and supports his judgment on the very same topic another day. Paul is not doing it for fun and no other US legislator would either. Paul, like many other members of the Republican Party, changed their opinions to whatever suits their own purposes the best. As America's current ruling party, this kind of shady fluidity demolishes our reputation abroad. If we can't trust our own leaders to tell us the truth about what they are thinking, why would other world leaders expect the truth from them? The Republican Party is destroying its own credibility, proving to be untrustworthy, and supporting a president who openly has no regard for anyone that does not support him. As Republicans control both the Oval Office and the Senate, the Republican Party's actions reflect not only on their own character, but the character of our nation. In clearly seeking power without integrity, America's global reputation is getting obliterated. A common counter to the arguments I have presented so far is why does it matter what other countries think of us? We have the strongest military by a mile, and our economy is one of the world's most important and influential. Even if other nations do not like us, they will either be militarily subdued into good relations with us, or forced into business with the world's largest economy out of necessity. This kind of simple thinking misses the point entirely. America is practically synonymous with freedom. There are memes about it, t-shirts made by the millions, it is even in our Pledge of Allegiance. While it is correct to say that America could more than likely force other nations into business with us, it is not other nations we should be concerned about. When our reputation is bad, as a nation, we have nothing left to push us towards doing the right thing. The mindset changes from, if I acted this way people will think low of me, to, people already dislike me so I'll just act how I please. A university in Italy that I am unable to pronounce did a study on the reward of a good reputation. The researchers there found that a social circle closest to you is the main thing holding you accountable for your actions. I quote, Without the impending threat of losing your good reputation among friends, there's little to hold you back from doing the wrong thing. A bad reputation among peers often leads to exclusion from the group. If America has no exclusion to fear and a ruined reputation, who will hold us accountable? The answer is nobody. It is our duty to the world as the premier global superpower to hold ourselves accountable for our actions when nobody else can. When a president like Trump is elected and a government composed of a thousand Rand Paul support him, we don't do a disservice to other countries, we do a disservice to ourselves and everything we stand for as Americans. A Trump presidency and Republican support is not simply the party I do not vote for. It is a detriment to America's global reputation and a moral failure to every single person who views themselves as an American.